Hi all, Mass Spartan Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. It is summertime, so what would not be more suitable than do a solar inverter teardown? Now this is a Fronius ID Plus 2LT, which I think from the datasheet is a two-phase solar inverter rated for 6 kilowatt. And it only uses two phases and the battery connection, or at least the string connection I think that might be, is uh, rated for 60 volt DC. I'm not quite sure how that works as uh, the bottom part is actually missing. This is only the inverter part. So the whole control, display, input, etc. is actually missing. But the inverter part is the most important when we do power electronics. So let's get this torn down. It did only have four of these screws here securing the front plate. So I guess that Somehow hinges. How is this even? But my oh my, look at that inverter. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful. All magnetics is elevated up on these plates here. We can see some nice copper bus bar running down there and you can hear the aluminium plates sing when I speak. What a lovely design. Let me just get all this housing away so we can really dive down into these nice inverter parts here. It is an absolute beauty. If I had some kind of design award on my channel, well, this wins. This is it. This is absolutely stunningly beautiful. Then we can go down into details about electronics and how it's built, but Overall, how it looks and feels, that's just, that's just beautiful. Conformal coating. We can see that there's a line going down over here. The board was simply just dipped down into conformal coating. And I have a few issues with this. We have four large power resistors sitting here. They are completely brown, dipped in conformal coating. We have a heatsink over here that's completely soaked in conformal coating. There's no way that has its original rating anymore. A few other things that really jumps at us straight from the start here is it is two-faced as we thought out from the model number and it has some good markings on the, uh, on the PCBs. So we can see that much better when we remove the magnetics. So at first let's notice that we actually have a isolation transformer sitting in here. We have transformer primary and we have transformer secondary. Then this is marked as inductor and the other one over here is marked as inductor 3 and inductor 2 and inductor 1. And it's two completely identical units. They have a bus line running here. So communicating to output to two-phased 400 volt AC. So let me just get all the magnetics away and we can take a closer look at the power electronics sitting underneath there. Before tearing out one of the inverter boards and taking a closer look at that, let's get an overview. We have the DC plus and minus running at a bus over here. DC plus, DC minus, DC plus, DC minus. That is the supply into the two inverter boards. We have heatsink tunnels, we have switches sitting on each side. We have two separate electrolytic DC bus capacitance banks. We have a single controller sitting here, which is a TMS, which is probably a Texas Instrument 320 series microcontroller. We have a 10 megahertz crystal sitting next to it. We have two Altera FPDAs or something like that sitting next to it. Over here we can see that it's connected to L1 and L2 and neutral and neutral. So this is actually not, yeah, it's outputting between the two phases 400 volt AC, but as these are in respect to neutral, it is a 230 volt AC outputting inverter and there's just two of those. We seem to have some rear relays sitting down here. We have some current transformers, some output filtering. And we have this huge fan. Up on the other side we have some more relays, we have some power resistors, 
and we have a nice little piece of B art sitting here. So let's just um, be sure to get, take a closer look at that one. Just next to the inductor one, we have a nice little pictogram of a sun shining on a photovoltaic panel, which then delivers a small electrical line down to a globe. Overall functionality that we see here is we get some DC in, it's being converted to 230 volt AC in that string out again. And that is through the isolation transformer from the DC side to the AC side. And the AC side has two chokes or inductors for the yeah, topology used here. We can also see there is a lot of optocouplers sitting all around the board. We have two white ones sitting up here. As long as well over here, we have two white ones and here they again. So there's a clear distinguished path between our control logics and our power electronics. The bus is marked LTG bus. Not quite sure if that's any particular kind of bus. Then we have a plus 8 volt regulator and a plus 15 volt regulator. So that's our housekeeping power supply sitting here. I had to butcher the board a bit to get a look at these switches here. Now it is identical on the other side. So we have four of these, four of these and four of these. Over here we start in the DC bus side. These are APT 95 N65B2C3G. That is MOSFETs rated for 650 volt DC. 94 ampere and 282 ampere peak. Now this is quite curious that we have such a high voltage MOSFET sitting on the DC side, which is rated for 60 volt DC panel input. Here in the middle, we have some FGH IDPT bricks, 40 and 60s, so that's 40 amp, 600 volt, rated for 120 ampere peak. And on the output states, as expected, we have some diodes, and these are some very nice Cree C2 D10 120. They are silicon carbide Schottky diodes rated for 10 amps at 1200 volt. Another small PCB art is that little thermometer sitting over here next to the thermocouple that goes to the heatsink. So completely unnecessary, but very nice. There's not too much to say about the backside of the PCB. We can see there is a lot of wires for, for the low voltage parts. Very nice lit separation. And we can see the darker shadows here that this is actually a three or four layer board so we have all our power traces running on the back side or in the middle layer. On the top side, there is very few power traces. That is mostly all the control electronics. I hope you enjoyed the teardown of this solar inverter just as much as I did. It is still a beautiful board. It's still a beautiful construction. Despite all the conformal coding, there is literally no component that I think I can reuse from this as it's simply yeah, smeared into that. It's just been dipped, maybe even double dipped. You can see that um, there was actually tape in front of the heatsink tunnel, so the whole heatsink here itself was also dipped. It's just everywhere. I hope I deserved your like of this video. Maybe you would even like to subscribe to the channel and check out future videos. And if I'm real lucky, you would share this with your friends. So until next time, see ya.